Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, don't you ever forget this. I noticed the four speakers, actually the five speakers, he did not respond well. Huh? Who knows? Where is Maryam? When you are, and this is the words of your creator and mine, it's not mine, it's not someone's opinion. When you are greeted, when you are greeted with a greeting, Assalamu alaikum is a greeting. And what a greeting! Assalamu alaikum is Jannah. It's the greeting of the people of Jannah. And there is two orders here. One is an order, the other one is a recommendation. فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنِ مِنْهَا Respond. It's an order. It's not my choice. Respond better. I say, Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Don't say, Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't forget this. Our duha, minimum, is to respond. So there is, I don't know, maybe we are close to 100 in this room. Maybe I heard 10 voices. Don't do that. You missed the focus. The best thing I heard today, may Allah reward you, Ustad Sousa, which we miss all as women, is the focus. The focus. We are distracted. We're shattered. We go right and left. Anyone say something, we go. Stay focused. And after I listened to all the speakers, I said to myself, what am I going to say? Subhanallah. But I need to bring you to reality. We lived in, since the morning, since 11 o'clock, we've been living in the past. And I always say, and Allah is my witness, I wish I was at that time. I wonder how these people didn't believe. Can you imagine? Or Rasulullah Sallallahu in front of you, Sayyidah Khadija, Sayyidah Fatima, Sayyidah Aisha. What struggles they had. But we are his beloved. They are his companions. You know the hadith. Ashabi. We are the people who are loved to him, provided we deserve that title. So let's come to reality. We live in 2021, almost at the end. Some, how many of you are out of town other than me? And I know, okay, so some of you are out of town. Majority are California. So, Sunday, we are in November 28, 2021. I'm not living with Sayyidah Fatima. I'm not living with Sayyidah Khadija. I wish I am. No, I'm either a student and I'm going tomorrow to the college, and Allah knows what I'm going to see without going to the details, right? Dr. Amina can share with you what she sees every day at Stanford. Or if you are like me and Dr. Arania, tomorrow we're going to work, and we're going to reality. Or if you're going to home, you're going to reality with your children and all the struggles of raising children in this day and age. Am I correct? So what do we do? Have you ever asked yourself this question? He put me here. He did, he chose, and he is who? Capital H. He chose me, or he chose for me, to be in 2021. He could have easily made me with a Rasulullah and breeze. Even the difficulties I'll breeze because he's going through it, alayhi salatu But that's not his choice. And everything Allah choose, this is the first thing, if you're going to write anything, as a woman, it should be every human being, but specifically woman, anything Allah choose for me is the best. There's no other answer. I like it. I don't like it. It's hard. It's difficult. It's may Allah forgive me for this word that we all say, it's unfair. Why me? It's khair. Then next question is going to come. What does he expect from me as a woman? That's why the title, The Muslim Woman. Are you, and I'm asking everybody, are you? I need an answer. I want an answer clear. 
Are you the Muslim? Are you a Muslim woman? Absolutely. Now the next question, are you the Muslim woman? He wants you to be. The like of Fatima of 20, may Allah be pleased with her, of 2021. The like of Sayyidah Khadija of 2021. The like of Sayyidah Asiya, 2021. And like the Sayyidah Maryam of 2021. Yes or no? I didn't hear an answer. You are all are right. We're not. Why? Have you ever asked yourself, why? What is the difference? You need to ask yourself, that's how we change. Unless we know reality, we will never change. I can claim whatever I want to claim, but he knows my reality and he knows your reality. Why I am not? And, and all the speakers, may Allah bless them all, eloquently explain to you, they did not live easy life. They had all the challenges we have. What is the difference? Can anyone say any word? What is the difference? And what is Allah said in the Quran about this? Qalu shagalatna. Who can finish it? Haya Maryam. Amwaluna wa ahluna. They say we are busy with our children and with our wealth, homes, career, how much we have in the bank account. She has bigger home, I need to do the same. She just bought this, the purse competition, I call it. It's so sad, but it's reality. Purse competition, shoes competition, home competition, children competition. We're busy with this. They had all this, but they did not allow it to move them away from Allah. Refocus, exactly the word that uh, Sheikh Hassan just said. I keep reminding myself every morning. Number one, who are you? And I'm gonna give you one by one. Number one, I and you, and every creation of Allah from al jinwal ins On this earth, we are here for one reason. And what is that reason? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create ins and jinn. Allah said this in Surah Al-Dariyat. But to worship me. Worship me is a loose translation. It's a very loose translation. Because when I tell you what is ibadah, what is worship, what are you going to tell me? What are you going to tell me? Fast, pray, go to hajj, alhamdulillah, I wear hijab, what's wrong with me? That's not it. That's superficial. Al-ibadah, act of worship, it's everything. This is the ulama, the scholars have defined it differently. The one I'm going to share with you is the definition of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. And it's very practical. Allah, you don't have to be scholar to be a abd of Allah. In fact, most of the real ibad of Allah, majority were not scholars. They know Allah. al ibadah act of worship, everything, everything. Allah loves, loves and like. I'm sorry, loves and he's pleased with. يُحِبُّ وَيَرْضَى He loves and he's pleased with. Look at this, internally and externally. So I'm not with people something, and in, when I am alone, I'm something else. Internally and externally, from words and action. Words and action, one more time. Everything Allah loves and pleased, internally, externally, saying and actions. Then you are the servant of Allah. Then I am the Fatima of 2021. And I am the Khadija of 2021. May Allah be pleased with them. And a Sayyidah Asiya and a Sayyidah Maryam. If I follow this, if I follow this from the moment I open my eyes to the moment I close my eyes to the last breath he is going to give me, if I live with these six, 
than that I am who he wants me to be, wherever he will put me, as a mother or a motherless, as a child or a childless, as a professional or taking home or staying home, as a student or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is who you are or who he wants you to be. Are you? That's the question you have to ask yourself every moment. Since morning we are here. Were you Ibadullah? Inshallah, yes. Ya Rabbi, Amin. But have I shown him and I've said and did and act and prayed in every way he loves and pleased and pleased with? How many times, let me ask you this question. When you want to do something, the question inside you, what people will say about me? Well, this person will be happy, or that person will not be. True or false? True or false? How many times you ask this question, are you happy with me? Are you happy with the way I am? With the way I dress? With the way I speak? With the way I respond? Do we ask ourselves this? Do we? Honestly, do we? You want to be the Abd of Allah? You want to be the Sayyid of Fatima of 2021? Work on your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. And let me take you through what he said about the Muslima woman in the Quran. Do you know that? Do you know Allah described us in the Quran? Not by name, but what does he wants from me? Yes or no? Absolutely. Unfortunately, we read the Quran, Ramadan is coming, and some of us have memorized, some of us understand, but where is the practice? Number one, you look at yourself as a woman, you are two parts. You are external, the way I look, the way you look, and there is internal, only he knows. Let's take the external first, I leave the best for the last. What does he want me to look like? Not the way he created me. I have no choice in this. How does he want me to look like? What did he tell me? قل للمؤمنات يغضضن من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا ما ظهر منها And then he goes on ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا لبعولتهن أو آبائهن Go and read Surah Al-Nur, the light. And he's saying, first he said it to the men. This is one of the times where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala separated the order, one for men, one for women. And came to the woman, say to the believing woman, you and me, do what? External. I'm going to tell you what he wants from me. You say to yourself, check it. I do it. I don't. And if you don't do it, say why. Number one, lower your gaze. How many of you lower the, your, the, their gaze when they are talking to the opposite gender? Muslim or non-Muslim? Don't show me hands. It's not about you. It's in general. Whether with, with Muslims or non-Muslims, lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. That's who he wants me. That's what he wants me to do. That's what he's pleased with me. Then I am Abd of Allah. Then I am Sayyidah Fatima at work. And I am Sayyidah Fatima in college. What do you think Sayyidah Fatima when she was talking to Sayyidina Abu Bakr? Or to Sayyidina Umar? Or Sayyidina Mu'ad? She would be joking. And you know how we speak these days? Lower your gaze. That's the first thing he said. Number two, please forgive me. I don't mean anybody here. What do you wear? What do you wear? What is this focus on beauty external and no focus on beauty internal? And he said it. The ayah that everybody want to translate and explain the way they want to tell me hijab. And I don't want to use the word hijab. I'm going to use proper Islamic attire. It's not an obligation. Let them say whatever they want to say. Let's meet on the sirat. 
And let's answer Allah that question. Don't show your beauty, period. And always women, when they ask me this, I'm sure all of you have heard this question. Can I put, what about the Muslim nail polish? You all hear this question. I don't go through that. I say one thing. He said, don't show your beauty. What does nail polish does? What is makeup does? And then you answer. Your beauty, ladies. And that's the hardest thing for the woman. One of the hardest things of the woman. When you are in front of that mirror, remember you're a servant of Allah. This, remember this and say this to him. Is this is how you want me to go out? Is this is pleasing you? Is this is, does this makes you happy? If you hear the answer, yes, go out. If you start justifying it, then you are not Sayyidah Fatima at this time, or Sayyidah Aisha, or Sayyidah Asiya, or Sayyidah Khadija. The way we look, I have no idea why pleasing people and pleasing ourselves is more important than Allah. It's, it's astonishing fact to me. Everybody else is doing it. That's how I hear it. Young and old, everyone is doing it. And I say, what about Allah? No answer. The way you look, the way you look, what do you hear? What do you listen to? What do you listen to? And these days with social media and TikTok and everything else, the poison around us. When you turn it on, again ask yourself this question. Is this is pleasing to Allah? Is this is something he wants me to do? Wallahi ladhi la illahu, and I said his name. Each one of us internally knows the answer. But you justify. You know he's not happy with what you are hearing, what you are listening to, regardless. Three, what do you say? A tongue, wa ma adraka ma tongue. What did he say? Thakalatka ummuka ya Mu'adh. This famous hadith about speech. Sayyidina Mu'adh, the Sahabi, the companion, who Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ya Mu'adh, inni uhibbuk. Mu'adh, I love you. Imagine who's that Mu'adh. May Allah be pleased with him. Imagine if Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam look at you or me and says, Ya Haifa, inni uhibbuk. Ya Allah, I'll be dead right away. Ya Rabbi, Ameen. But that doesn't come from vain. Do you see my point? It doesn't come because I am who I am or you are who you are. I have to earn it. And Sayyidina Mu'ad, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to be taken accountable about what we say? And he asked very simple question. Thakalatka ummuka ya Mu'ad, he answered, may your mother mourn you. Meaning, you will be dead and your mother will mourn you. What else will put people into narration on their faces or on their noses in the hellfire but the harvest of their tongue? What do we say, woman? And I specifically say here, woman, because we are more in that aspect. Hamazin mashain, hamazin lamazin mashain binamin. We don't like her, we don't say anything. But our face say a lot. In masajid, I'm not saying outside, in masjid. She comes in and everybody looks at her. And maybe this is the first time she ever comes to a masjid. And we start judging and looking at each other. And then start talking. Watch your tongue, ladies. Watch your tongue. Sayyidina Abu Bakr held his tongue. Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Who I and you. He held his tongue. And Sayyidina Umar saw him. And he said, what is this? He said, Hada awradani mawarid. This took me through the path, meaning the wrong path. Jail it. As one of these scholars said, the thing that needs long jail is my tongue. You are a Muslim woman. And ya abda amatullah, you are the servant of Allah. Nothing comes out of this 
but what pleases Allah. And sometimes I say this to myself, I wish I can have selfie 24 seven, because there is selfie by the way. They are taking selfies of everything we do and say, and not do and not say. And just let me hear and listen to what I say. To what I say. Allah said this in Surah An-Nisa. There's no good in, what, in most of what they say. Listen to this. Most of what they say has no goodness. La khayr. Illa. Three. Amara bi You say something to promote charity. Any charity. Not necessarily money. Illa man amara bi sadaqatin aw ma'roof. Goodness. Aw islahin bayna al-nas. Or you bring people together. Rectify relationship. See what we say. Someone comes to you and said, she did this to me. Most of us do what? Most of us do what? How many of us will respond and say, maybe she didn't mean it. Maybe you misunderstood it. Maybe it came the wrong way. What do we say? Really? And what did you answer? If I was you, I will not talk to her anymore. Don't do that. Your tongue, your tongue, your tongue, the way you look, the way you look externally, and the way you look, use your eyes, the way you use your ears, and the way you use your tongue, the way you conduct yourself. Please forgive me. We live in a society, I'm a working woman, and I know how difficult it is to practice what I am saying. But wallah, the only one who can help you is him, and you can do it. Absolutely, you can do it. If you focus on it, and you want to please him, and you turn to him every morning, make me do what pleases you. Make me say what pleases you. And don't let me go to myself. Don't let me alone with me. With me. How do we conduct ourselves with each other and with the other gender? Masjid outside masjid. Haya, you know this word? Bashfulness, humbleness, the way you speak, the way you walk. Allah said it in Surah Al-Qasas. And it's about a woman. And there's a reading they say, عَلَى اسْتِحْيَاءٍ قَالَتْ When she speaks, and this is in Surah Al-Qasas, the stories, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Sayyidina Musa. Just before he married one of the daughters of Sayyidina Shuhayb, she came to him. Woman, you have an opinion. Say it. You're right. Don't be, don't be shy. But be shy in the way you say it. She came to him. This is a woman. This is a daughter of a prophet. She came to him, Sayyidina Musa. And she said, come on in. My father is inviting you to thank you for what you did for us. But how did she say it? Allah said this, go back to your Quran. She talked to him with humbleness, with bashfulness, lowering her gaze. She was not shouting. She was not walking in the masjid, hi, how are you, how is everybody? And everyone has to hear what I am saying. That's not the Muslim woman. The Muslim woman, you know how I describe her? Very strong. Very pious is the combination of the four you heard this morning. From each one, lower your gaze, dress properly, walk and talk with haya. Don't worry about what other people. I walk in my work, you know what I say? Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu. Ya Allah, forgive these people. They just don't know. That's what the Rasul used to say when he walks between his people and they don't believe. They just don't know. And part of it is my fault. Because I'm not showing it. I'm not practicing it. Don't be like everybody else. Be who you are. In fact, who Allah wants you to be. Who Allah wants you to be. And the last but not the least is who are you internally? Will you be described as a Sayyidah Maryam? How was she described in the Quran?
There's no other description. Subhanallah, twice. وَالَّتِي أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِي The one who protected and guarded her private part. And she was of those of Al-Qanitin. Al-Qanit is the person who is in a complete submission to Allah. Complete, not wishy-washy, complete. And in, always in a state of worship of Allah, connection and submission. That's the Sayyidah Maryam. That's who she was. Are you? When you're driving your car. I'm not saying when you are in the masjid or in Ramadan. I'm saying 24-7. You're driving your car going to work. Dropping your children. Are you qanita? Can you be? Have you ever thought of this? Of course you can. The way you speak, if you are alone, do you, do you contemplate on, especially living in this beautiful state, when you're driving, do you contemplate on the things around you and look at the beauty of Allah? You're a qanita. Versus traffic, or I'm talking to my friend and Allah knows what I am saying, then you missed it. Then you missed it. Spiritually, spiritually is what we need internally. This connection of Allah, a friend of mine just asked me the other day, and she said, how can I always remember Allah? I said, he's around you. He's around you 24-7. We are distracted, he's there. Look at this, look at this, look at this. What did Allah say about this in the Quran? Anybody can answer me? What did he say about that? Anyone, say it. Don't be, don't be scared, say it. But what did he say specifically about the drinking water? I gave you a hint now. Do you see the water that you drink? How many bottles of water you see a day? How many times you drink water a day? Do you think of this verse? Surah Al-Waqi'ah, most of you know it. Do you see the water that you drink? Allah is asking rhetoric question. No answer. Did you send it down? That's what he said. Or we, him, subhana. And then he gives you a statement that by itself is enough. If we will, we have made it ujaja, bitter. Why you are not grateful? If you live this way in your life, in case you wonder, how do I get there? How do I become that woman we are all talking about since morning? In every part of your life, in every minute in your life, connected with Allah. In every minute in your life, connected with Allah, you're eating, you're cooking, you're shopping, you're driving, you're tired, you're exhausted. You're stressed out. Everything is not going well in your day. What do you need to do? Be that Qanita. Be that Sayyida Maryam. Go to your room, alone, in your sujood. Cry to him and say, I can't take it anymore. You are the one who's going to make it easy. Then you are Sayyida Maryam in that moment. And the last, and I'm going to end up with this because I want time for questions and answers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this, as Shaykh Sousan said this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to ibadah, the real act of worship, he did not differentiate at all. He actually specified and separate. And I want you to memorize this ayah. It's a long ayah. But memorize it. It's worth it. It's in Surah Al Inna al Muslimin wal Muslimat. It's in Surah Al Ahzab. Alhamdulillah, you know it. I'm going to say one by one, and I'll translate. So you learned it. I don't know the number. Inna al-Muslimina wal muslimat Verily, the Muslim men, the Muslim woman, separate. This was the answer to the question of Sayyidah Umm Salama. There's different opinion about it, but this is one of them. Now, look at all these descriptions. He put descriptions, and see where do you score. Inna al-Muslimina wal muslimat the Muslim woman, the Muslim man, the Muslim woman. Quick question, what is a Muslim? The five pillars we all have. Really, the Muslim, you and I, when we submit to Allah. 
submit to Allah and everything. You came late. You planned it very well. And you had the car. And you looked at the GPS. And everything was perfect. Guess what? You came in and you took the wrong exit. Muslim, you submit to the will of Allah. You don't say, why I planned it. You're not a Muslim. The real word of Muslim I'm speaking. Inna muslimina wal muslima. One, and he separated here. Wal mu'minina wal mu'minat. The believing man and the believing woman. You believe in the six pillars, but you believe that what befall you will never miss you. And what miss you will never befall you. You're a believer when you wish for your sisters what you wish for yourself. You're a believer when your neighbor is safe because you are his or her neighbor. Look at the real picture of Iman. Don't, I always say this to myself, don't narrow this deen. Don't make it too shallow. It's way deeper. In the Muslimina wal Muslimat. Wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat. Now. Wal Qanitina wal Qanitat. Sayyidah Maryam. The one who is spiritually connected to Allah, submitting to Allah, asking Allah. Three and four. In the Muslimina wal Muslimat. Wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat. Wal Qanitina wal Qanitat. Wal Sadiqina wal Sadiqat. Those who are truthful, men and women. Truthful in two things. Look at your tongue again. It's truthful in what you say and truthful what you do. You say, Ya Allah, I love you. We all say that. You know what he says to me? Show me. Show me the love. And the moment the choice comes in between what pleases him and what I like or what pleases him and what people like, what happens? Which choice we choose? Of course, the other one. Sadiqeen, those who are truthful. And then, wasabirina wasabirat, those who are patient. And not patient only because you're going through a difficult marriage or because you didn't get what you want. Sometimes we have everything, but we are bored. I need to be patient. Sometimes I'm sick. I need to be patient. Sometimes I don't get what I want. I need to be patient. Asabirina wasabirat. And then, وَالْخَاشِعِينَ وَالْخَاشِعَةِ Allah divided in this, in this verse every act of worship. Khasha is different than qanit. Khasha, when you are in your salah, like that sahabi, if there is a fire in the masjid, he didn't move. You're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he comes to the acts of worship. وَالصَّائِمِينَ وَالصَّائِمَاتِ Those who are fasting, they fast, not from Ramadan to Ramadan. These days, take opportunity. Fast, short day. And then, وَالْحَافِظِينَ فُرُوجَهُمْ وَالْحَافِظَاتِ Those who protect their private part. Haya, what you dress, the way you speak, the way you interact with the other gender. I'm not saying complete separation. This is not reality. They did not say the Aisha taught to the Sahaba. How do you conduct yourself? And then, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Those who remember Allah a lot. This is one of the few things in the Qur'an Allah said a lot. Where are you from this description? That's the Muslim woman. That's what Allah wants from you and me. Where are we? And why we are not? Don't let amwaluna wa ahluna distract you. Don't let your children, don't let your wealth don't let your beauty, don't let people distract you. At one point, you will take nothing with you. I just witnessed it last week. As I was driving today, I remember the drive. A very dear friend who passed away. And I'll share this story with everybody because I literally asked Allah, whatever you have given her when I am dying, give me. Three hours, she is dying. We are all around her. Three hours, nothing was in that room, in the ICU, in the hospital, but the dhikr of Allah. Non-stop. You know, talqeen, when you, when you keep reminding the dying person of la ilaha illallah, this didn't stop. And in between, there was Yasin. And then they said, she's almost going to go. And I was there in the room. Went to her ear, read all Yasin. 
Are you ready? Thumma ilayhi turja'un. And she passed. What did she have with Allah? I know, I can't say, but I know this woman very well. This is what you need to be. The Muslim woman, and if you, if, if you think this woman lived a smooth life, you are absolutely not right. All the challenges in the deen, in the dunya, in everything, in marriage, in children, you name it. Before they intubated her, I was there. This is not somebody told me. I was there. She looked at me and says, I didn't pray Fajr. I said, do tayammum. In the ER, she did tayammum. She prayed Fajr. They intubated her, didn't wake up afterward. And we are fine, and we have no problem, and we just sleep for Fajr. And I want to be a Sayyidah Maryam. And I claim I'm Sayyidah Fatima. I can claim whatever I claim, but the moment when it comes, Allah will show me who I am and who are you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I am gonna tell you what all my teachers used to pray for us. They always used to say, pray for yourself. Kuni mubaraka inama kunti. May Allah make you blessed wherever you are. I love this dua. It's actually the dua of Sayyidina Isa. Ja'alani mubaraka inama kunt. You know what it means? Wherever you are, Whatever situation you are, there's khair is going to come from you to yourself and to the people around you. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah reward Rahma Foundation. This is beautiful. May Allah accept from all of us. It's a beautiful day. We spend it all remembering him, subhanah, remembering these blessed women. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a little bit of what he gave them. Ya Rabbi, I mean, just he looks at everybody, everyone in a minute, and he says, all of you are Maryam. Ya Rabbi Ami, all of you are Sayyidah Fatima. Ya Rabbi Ami, ask him. He is the generous. He is al kareem And he will never, ever let us down. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi tasliman kathira.